you both at the festival to present two new books. Uh, what can you tell us about your works that you presented here? Would you like to start? My book is called Heimat, uh, and it is a graphic memoir about my uh, German family history and the Second World War, and an attempt of my trying to figure out what my family did or didn't do uh, under the Nazi regime, and also a search for German cultural identity. And it's a it's a visually driven. Yeah, book. graphic memoir, fully illustrated. Wow. What about yours, Tim? Um I've been doing a series of books about design for children, told through uh, well-known fairy tales. And I, I've been publishing them with Koda Aini here. And this is my fourth. It's, uh, this is in English, so I'll say it's The Emperor's New Clothes, I Vestiti Nuovi dell'Imperatore. I Nuovi Vestiti dell'Imperatore. And um, it's essentially the, the loose history of 20th century men's clothing through the story of the emperor who doesn't, that is not wearing yes. clothes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I have a question for you. Okay. About that later. Um, so, how do you go about translating a story into images? We have this whole new, um, you know, project called My Life in Strips, and then we'd like to investigate a little, a, a little more about drawing. So. Is it easier for you to work uh, directly with drawings, or do you translate from words to, to drawings? And I think we would answer this differently, probably, mm -hmm. each other. Why do you start? Uh, for me, the story is always the starting point of a project. So I don't actually use a sketchbook. To me, I only uh, draw in order to communicate a particular story. And so um, I begin by writing down the words. And I don't really sketch during the writing process, so I spent, um, a for this particular project, I spent two years just writing until I felt that the uh, narrative was set. And then I began with the illustration process. And to me, one of the most important things when translating text into images is um, that you don't repeat what's said in the text in the images so that the, there's no hierarchy between text and image and that also that the image um, the images represent an additional emotional layer mm -hmm. uh, that's not necessarily existent in the text and for this particular project with, which is about the second world war and german guilt um, with a strong german perspective um, it was very important to me not to create a sense of sentimentality which images can sometimes do. And so balancing, for instance, moments that were particularly emotional and were focusing on the German war experience with images uh, was difficult because I needed to really make sure that I'm not conveying the wrong idea yes. uh, by um, you know, miscommunicating um, it, yeah, so that people wouldn't think I'm victimizing Germans. Or, so that was the tricky thing for me wow. in terms of balancing both. And uh, I'm actually having trouble while Nora's talking, not drawing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do keep a sketchbook. I keep lots of sketchbooks. And even when I don't have a sketchbook, I tend to draw on whatever surface is in front of me. So I picked up the pen and really kept myself from opening it and starting to draw. Uh, I begin with drawings. And um, especially with these uh, books where there's a pre-existed story, mm -hmm. you know, a story that, that already has a set um, number of, of characters and uh, a narrative that's, that's I'm, I'm actually quite true to the narratives. The only thing that's really um, fresh in them is that the, the setting, the, um, all of the, um, uh, it's almost as if I'm, I'm dressing a stage, uh, the stage set, the costumes, and really the most important thing for me is finding character. So I'll draw and draw and draw until I come up with who the emperor is, for instance. The, um, um, you know, what's, what's his chin look like? Uh, I'll draw 20 noses. I'll draw them over and over until I get him right. And so for me, it really begins with uh, the drawing. So the, the theme of my life in trips is uh, you need to be proud. Um, how
how do you, um, what, what pops up to your mind uh, with this tagline and can you please draw something about you it? You need to be proud? Yes. I already, had a, more details I already had a uh, character from my book, so who was the essence of um, ridiculous pride. Anyway. Slightly different notions of pride, but you, you actually talk about that in the book, don't you? Yes. The absence of the idea, of, or the, the different idea of pride in Germany, the t post-war. Wow. Thank you. Um, we won't go any further in explaining it. We'll we'll try to have like the video and the whoever sees it. And um, to understand without oh editing. what we're talking about right, right yeah um, well I thought you weren't going to explain to us but we we won't explain why this means pride or that means pride we'll let yeah, people we'll, we'll just have people come bring their own yes. interpretation sounds good and but we'll have one more and that one being um, you've been in Manta before uh, you Stephen have been here probably more times than more times so though though together we spent. Uh, a five-week period of working on projects here. Here? Yeah, wow. a, a number of years ago, but yeah. Wow. And so, could you draw something that pops up to your mind when you think about Mantua? Oh, man. That's a tough one. <laughs> it's difficult to draw Sprizzolona, for instance. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, part of it too is, and I was, I was thinking about this a lot in the last few days, that um, I'm almost at the point where when I walk through the streets I uh, ignore the amazing sights because I, I, I've, and I've wondered what it must be like to be someone who comes just for the festival for the first time and leaves. But by now I know where the art supply store is and the stationery store and, uh, you know, I've been to the doctor a few times here. So I, I just treat it like another town. And um, so that those things that you often take away with you when you're a tourist from a place, I, I, I find it hard to imagine what those are because it's, it's a gorgeous town and I have to keep remembering as I'm looking around that this is not uh, my hometown. And also, I don't know what it's like for you all to be here and do you appreciate every day how extraordinary historically and visually this place is, or is it just the place that you go to the doctor or to school or, uh, you know? 
Um, I just wanted to capture the moment of going to the doctor because Stephen had a tick here a few years ago and uh, that's why we went to the doctor and it was a very nice cultural experience. <laughs> For you. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a, we refer to it often. Spirizo. Now, I, I like Spirizo Lona so much, I think it's probably my favorite dessert in the world, actually. Amazing. That Nora on my birthday very often makes sprizolona. She makes a very good sprizolona. Um, but it's something that I've never had any place other than here and in our house. Yes. In, in Brooklyn. Um, and to me it's the perp it's the best part of the cake. It's the topping, it's the crumbs, and it's the nuts without all the cake and everything else. So. And the fact that you have to break it by punching it. Yeah. You know? Oh well, that's you know what? That's yeah. interesting. You didn't know about Nobody's that? Nobody's ever told me that. I just. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a tradition. So the idea is that you get one of these round ones and, and you, you just want to open to open it, and if you know if it's an occasion, it's a birthday, it's your turn to do it. Otherwise, it's whatever turn it is. Huh. You just crack it open. Right. That's nice. But there's never anything buried inside it, right? No, like a, there's not a... There's like, you know, like the fab, I don't yeah, know. Yes, it's not the fab, there's not like the fab thing, it's just... Because it's too, it's too thin and like too crumby to hold anything inside of it, I think. Right, right. Or, or it's just something... And you can't, tradition without and you also can't break it neatly, you know, right. it doesn't... Yeah. You try to break off a piece and the whole thing... Right. No, it's a great, great food. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you. Great, thank you. Well, can, ask you, can I ask you like one more minute just sure. to get like sort of portrait of.